you ready? Well, I, <laughs> as I say, are you ready? I just thrust us you into it. You just did it. I just did it. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Uh, I took a look at the D and D clue from uh, from the Op Games, our friends who uh, who sent us some uh, some copies of these to take a look at, and this was exciting. This is this is out of the four that I received recently. This is the the last one. I was like, well, it's going to be clue. It's going to be D and D themed, and that's cool. And then I yeah. kind of just let it sit. Right. Right. Um, um, how many times have you played Clue? I mean, bajillions. Okay, All like, right. like Good. we're on it, the same page. It, it was one of those <laughs> games like they they had in school, and anytime there was a chance to play board games instead of schoolwork, I was all about it. So we played Clue uh -huh. a lot. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, uh, when I was in college, I started playing Clue with our our gaming club, and there were some folks there who would bring graph paper, and I was like, "What are you doing?" And they're they're like, "Well, we want to make basically this like three D representation. We want to know what every person, whenever you like." ask everyone a question i want to make notes about that what you asked which things you asked about and like yes or you know who responded and this huge ridiculous chart and we got super into clue um, yeah. and then we discovered mystery at the abbey which for me was just an upgrade of uh, a game in a you know logical level and i just moved on and played that one instead uh, i love that game it's great it gives you a lot of special powers rooms that will do different things give you new options and new ways to play um so when I started looking at this game, I was like, well, what's it going to be like? And it's like they gave you a lot of options and different ways to play. Oh. And I really, really like it. So if I were to play Clue, this would be the version I play. Okay. Um, a lot of the stuff is pretty similar, right? So we've got our board. We've got our town here. Um, this is based on, um, oh, my gosh. Uh, Baldur's Gate, The right? true Avernus. Uh, Baldur's Gate and Avernus, yeah, kind of mixed together, right? So you're, you're, I think you're up at the top still. Um, and you've got a list of suspects that are all from that adventure, and you've got a, some weapons that are part of the whole thing, right? Um, in this one, the uh, the puzzle box has arrived in town, and one of the these demons has taken over your one of the adventurers in your party and is now pretending to be them. So you are all a member of the party. You don't know which one has been taken over. That's kind of the deal. Um, you need to figure out which was the the weapon that took out your adventuring friend, and then you need to find the location where the puzzle box is hidden, right? Yeah. Clue stuff, you know, all the ways you think it's going to work. Um, but, uh, right, we've got here, like, the villa. We see little Kalimshan over here, the Dungeon of the Dead. We've got our secret passages to the other corner of the board, like classic movement stuff. Mm -hmm. um, here's our characters. And I... Well, I mean, I recognize Minsk and Boo, of course, from yeah. uh, the Baldur's Gate series. We've got Lulu, champion of uh, of D&D &D right now, it feels like. Um, I don't know enough about the adventure to know the other four, but I would like to become good friends with Slobber Chops. Yeah, Sl <laughs> Slobber Chops uh, is now my favorite uh, cat with wings ever. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know, good to know. <laughs> So you you pick your character, uh, you put it on the board, you wander around, um, you do the thing that you expect to do out of Clue, right? Yeah. Um, you uh, you ask people questions, um, trying to see their cards in order to figure out which three cards were left in the envelope, right? The whole deal. But this game adds much more. Um, it adds power cards. Uh, power each of your characters. Cards. I think this is the next slide here. Uh, each of your characters. Um, has a special ability that you can use once a game. So you want to be pretty careful about this. Uh, you don't want to get too much, but uh, but like, um, oh, I can't remember who green is. Uh, their ability is once per game, you can move to any room that does not have a secret passage. You can just hop around the board. Um, uh, set up a couple rumors. Intriguing, intriguing. Um, I think Lulu's is once per game, you may start a rumor using a room you are not in but the suspect is still moved into that spot, right? So there's still all the moving around and all the stuff that you're used to. Um, you've got your powers. That's already neat. So now your characters are distinct. There's also intrigue cards in the game. And every time what? someone suspects you, like you get drawn yeah. to a room, uh -huh. um, you get to draw an intrigue card for your trouble. Um, if you land on, there's a couple question marks on the board. Um, mm -hmm. You get to draw an intrigue card, Ooh. and one of one of the six sided dice, the the one pip is a question mark, and whenever you roll that, you also get an intrigue card. Wow. Many of those cards are good. Um, I think I got a couple of them up here pretty quick. Um, 
Oh, well, oh there we nope. there's some Stannis. folks hanging. Oh, see, I just I just like the pieces. We got all our little weapons here. You get little, you know, the things you want. You get your notepad, which is is as useful as 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 you make it. Um, there we go. The entry cards, because this is a big deal. Um, these cards that you draw don't always work, oh. <laughs> but basically oh, yeah. you get to play them and then roll a die to see if they will activate or not. Um, but if they do, they they do pretty powerful stuff. The Cults of the Absolute, roll a five or better, and, uh, and you loot a crystal ball. You can just look at one card you pick from another player's hand. It's awesome oh, wow. stuff. Um, an anonymous tip, you go investigate, roll the die twice, and move that number of spaces, right? Extra movement. The Swarm of Imps um, is also giving you extra movement, just a lot more. There's a, there's a bunch of them in the game. But some of the intrigue cards are not intrigue cards. They are instead the Devil Zariel. Um, no! If you draw one of these, you just put it beneath the board so that you know how many have been drawn. Um, if you are the player that draws the eighth card, Zariel destroys you. You have been captured and you are out of the game. Um, you can no longer move around or ask questions. I think you can still answer questions so the game can continue, but you are out. Um, and even worse, you take that eighth card and you put it back into the deck. And so the next person who draws it, everyone can lose this game. Zariel can win. <laughs> well, I mean, I think based on what I know about that adventure, <laughs> yeah, Zariel right. can win. <laughs> yeah. So, so I love that they they go through all this this effort, right? You uh, you you know, you decide you're going to guess, you get it wrong, you're out of the game, but you're still like around answering questions, you know. But uh, but everyone else just by playing the game can lose. Just if. You, you know, you roll dice, you have to draw an intrigue card. You know, someone questions you. Gosh, you're going to keep getting those intrigue cards. <laughs> I can just tank you if I want to, Justin, just what? by suspecting you again and again and again until you draw that last card. <laughs> uh, that is brutal. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so it's a wild game. I'm kind of interested. I think this is the last uh, slide I, I made for it. But it's a cool game. Nice. I like the pieces for it. The components are great. Um, and I love these additions that make it a little bit more than just the clue that I remember. They give it some, you know, some strange tactics, some cool abilities, which a game like this really, I think, needs. You know, um, uh, if I'm stuck, if I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just moving across the middle of the map, like trying to see what's up, I should go for one of those question marks. I should get an intrigue card and see if that'll give me a boost, you know, some way to get ahead of everybody else, uh, which clue itself doesn't really do. You just have to get lucky and you have to be good at deduction. And uh, in this game, by by adding this random element, I think really opens it up and makes it a lot more fun. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. That's, unexpected yeah. but i like it <laughs> i i i i really do like the the changes they made to the game um oh and actually there was one thing i kind of wanted to look at a little bit more because we kind of breezed over it just a little bit uh the 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 items in which the murder could have been done i like this i like the longbow the great sword the sensor yeah. of remembrance interesting right we've got a horn of blasting there um the Mastercraft Scimitar and Silver Claw. Silver which, uh, Claw. That was I funny. assume are all objects you get from the adventure in those early stages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and I, uh, I, I, you know, I wish we knew somebody who worked on, on, on Descent into Avernus, but sadly, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I do, I do really enjoy the, the, the fact that they've taken Clue and they've they've kind of turned it on its head a little bit so that we we get a very different feel. Um, yeah. All right. It's not quite aggressive, but it could be. You could play it aggressively if you wanted to. You could take Minsk and Boo down. <laughs> exactly, right? 